Command injection. One wrong input and suddenly your server is executing commands you didn't expect. Imagine you've built a web app that checks the stock of items at your store locations. It's simple. Users input the product ID in a store location. Your app passes these inputs into a shell command, which calls a back-end service to get the stock data. Now let's say someone isn't just trying to check stock. Instead of entering a product ID, they enter this. Now the back-end runs this command. The pipe character changes the input, so now your server runs two commands, one to check the stock and another to get the name of the current user. Here's how it works. When a vulnerable app accepts unchecked user input, it takes that input and passes it directly into the system shell. The shell executes whatever commands you stitched together, whether it's what you intended or not. In Java, the command looks like this. The exec function hands over your command to the operating system, including any nasty surprises that come from user input. Instead of who am I, let's say the attacker enters this. Now your app runs this command. The semicolon tells the shell to treat it as two separate commands on a Linux system. So your app just tried to delete your entire file system. Command injection is all about sneaking commands into the inputs and tricking the server into running them. Once an attacker has that foothold, they can escalate the attack, pivot to other systems, escalate privileges, or even gain full control over the server. In some cases, the app might not even display the output of the injected command. That's called blind command injection, but the attackers have a way to test it, like adding a time delay to the command. If the server takes an extra 10 seconds to respond, the attacker knows their injection worked. So how do you stop this? First, don't trust user input, ever. Always sanitize it and make sure it's exactly what you expect. In Java, avoid runtime.exec and switch to something like Process Builder, which separates commands from arguments. This process treats those inputs as arguments, not as part of the command, preventing dangerous injections. In Python, avoid using os.system and instead use subprocess.run, which provides a safer way to handle system commands. This keeps the input clean, separating the command from any user input, preventing attackers from slipping in additional commands. Next, use input validation. Only allow what's necessary. If the input should only contain numbers, enforce that. In Java, you can validate the input with a simple regex check. This ensures only numeric values are accepted, blocking attempts to inject commands. This has been Command Injection in 120 Seconds. Thanks for watching, and remember to always begin secure.